I hear the two older kids saying to her one day, yeah, we used to have a sister just like you. <laughs> her name was Christina. And she had glasses like you and blonde hair like you, and she was really cute just like you. And we ate her. <laughs> and I go running down. I'm like, you cannot say that to her. You can't scare her like that. That is unacceptable. And in another part of my brain, I'm thinking, you guys are a genius. <laughs> Maddie never listens to me. I'm like, get your shoes on. Get your shoes on. You know, Christina wouldn't get her shoes on either. Ah. <laughs> And all those moments bring me close to that mom I saw in the supermarket before I had children, you know, just losing it on her children. And you're thinking as a single person, oh my God, lady, get a grip, she's shorter than you. <laughs> you know, and then all of a sudden you are that mom <laughs> and you can't believe it. And then, do you remember the mom look your mom would give you? Do you remember the look, the mom look? You knew if you got that look, she was a moment away from losing it. You knew it. And then all of a sudden you have kids and you try the mum look and you can't believe it worked. <laughs> but instead of anger or intimidation, we can choose fun. Anger is something we choose because we don't know what else to do to get the results we want. And anger often manipulates people into doing what we want. Anger is always a choice that we make as parents. That was great. I think I've exactly. <laughs> My point is, if you become an opera singer, we have to leave now. And all your kids' friends are going, is that your mom? Yes, it is. I'm leaving. <laughs> They're going to leave. And instead of your kids having memories of you screaming at them and getting stressed and annoyed, they're going to have really fun memories of you being really playful. Thanks so much for volunteering. Please. And I know what you're all thinking. Well, you're just embarrassing your children. But fun cancels out stress and brings everyone into the moment. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is intuition. Kathy was also touching on this topic. And uh, she had a lot of uh, stats and good points about it. <laughs> I'm more about the fun of it. I remember being in the, in the lineup at the supermarket, and I had my newborn with me. And she was you know, fussing a bit. And I was a little embarrassed as a new mom. And I started to the, talking to this woman in front of me. And she was like, well, are you getting a lot of advice right now? And I'm like, yeah, from the way the baby should sleep, on his back or its side, what kind of diapers, to how many times a night I should be breastfeeding. It was just overwhelming to me. And she just looked at me and said, you know what? You're the child's mother. You know what is best for your child. Use your intuition. Intuition will always lead you to answers. Your fear will always lead you to questions and guilt. I think that it's one of the greatest tools we possess as parents. It really is. You've all been there, haven't you? It is crazy out there. I mean, obviously, there's common sense. There's safety in numbers. But how do we teach them independence when we can't let them go anywhere alone? You know? And it, and it is so true. I think the most important thing we can teach them is to listen to their gut, to their intuition. Because that way, whether it's a voice in their head or a feeling in their stomach, all those things are valid and to really listen to that. Another thing I want to discuss is the power struggle. Another issue that I came up with the workshops that I was running was siblings fighting and having the tools to deal with this. So I came up with two really fun ways that I deal with conflict with my kids when they start arguing. One, as you can tell, is court. Yes, I hold court. <laughs> Just think law and order. Dun, 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 dun. They start fighting. I set up my own little witness box. I get out my meat tenderizer as my gavel. <laughs> I've always wanted to be a judge. I make them swear on the most important book in the world. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you cat in the hat by Dr. Zeus. <laughs> All right? But what it forces them to do is who's ever in the witness box has to tell their truth. And who's ever not in the witness box, even though they can object at times, which I sustain, overrules, right? But I find it gives them the chance where they really have to listen to each other and really know why each other is mad. And I find by the end, by the time I make my ruling, which is usually a hug and a kiss and an apology who, with whoever I thought was uh, mistaken or did something wrong, but I find it really teaches them the tool of listening. Now this takes a little more planning, but if a fight breaks out in the house, I put them in, you want to fight? You want to fight? All right. I get out my pot and my wooden spoon and I ding my bell. Now the trick to this one is, it's all in the intros that you give them. 
So I'll put them in each corners and I'll be like, Madison, weighing in at 42 pounds, wearing her favorite pink Barbie pants and her Hello Kitty t-shirt, mad that her, why are you mad? Okay. Mad that her brother snapped the head off her Barbie is Madison. And then I put her back in her corner. I bring out her brother, right? And I'll be like, Jaden, weighing in at 62 pounds, wearing his camouflage pants and his favorite ninja t-shirt. Why did you tear the head off her Barbie? Sick of playing Barbies and her not wanting to play anything else is Jaden. And then I'll bring them both in. I'm like, I want a clean fight. Right? And by the time I find that I'm finished the intros, they are so giddy and know exactly why each other's mad that it doesn't go any further and is resolved at that point. But I find it really gives them, it really gives them the tool of listening to each other. But I think the thing, if it does happen in front of the kids, I think the most important thing to do is resolve it in front of the kids. You know, and I find that one of the most common fights that um, parents have told me about is the power struggle of, I worked all day. Yeah, well, I took care of the kids all day. And I like to call this codependent martyring. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what I like about this, I think how to resolve this is to acknowledge each other. I know what, you want your husband to walk in and say, you know what, I know you haven't had a break all day and that you worked so hard parenting our children and you've been doing such a great job that I want to help you right now. <laughs> and I know, <laughs> I know, it's funny. And I know, uh, yeah. And I know that as, as the, whoever works in your family, whether it's the husband or the wife or whether you, whether you both do, that you want to come into your house and go, wow, you worked all day. You know what? We got a bunch of stuff to get done here. Let's do it together and get on with us and get on with what we want to do for the evening. I find this is a really quick and easy way to resolve the conflict. You have to acknowledge each other. You know what? The best way, the best way for you to take care of your children is by taking care of yourselves. You want to teach them to be fully functioning human beings who are vibrant and alive and joyful. They're going to learn that by watching you. If you play the martyr, that's what they're going to learn. They're going to learn to play the martyr. A really important thing I find is I have here letting other people help and finding support. I know when I was a kid, my grandparents were in the house, my parents were in the house. It's so different nowadays. My mom lives in Vancouver, I live in Toronto, my sister lives outside of Toronto, a little town called East Gwillimbury. You know, we're all over the place. So finding a support system, whether it's like two or three friends where you each take each other's kids for one hour a day, and you write and you read and you discover who you are again. And I just find it so important for you to do that. And you have to make time for your relationship. I was so happy to see that so many couples were here and had left their kids this weekend. I think it's so important to, to re-nurture your relationship. I know for my husband and I, it was like three, four years before we went out. It's like we had, you know, through the day-to-day -day challenges of parenting and through, you know, housework and homework and gotta work and laundry and on and on it goes, we're jugglers. And the first ball to drop is usually our own. You have to take time for your relationship. I mean, parenting is letting go, isn't it? It's one big lesson in letting go. You, you give birth, you let go. You nurse, you stop, you let go. They go to school for the first time, you let go. They finish school, you let go. And once you let go, you have to trust that what you've taught them, they can take care of themselves. But that job of letting go is way easier if yourself is intact. Because once they do leave the house, you already know who you are. You already know what you want to be. And I hope today's lecture gives you guys like some really fun things you could do with your kids and just gives you great memories of being a parent. Thank you so much for being here.